What's up you guys, it's Steve here, and just released, we have word of approved stimulus coming from Senator Joe Manchin. And this is your Build Back Better, Building a Better America stimulus package, stimulus check, and just all around stimulus update. There has been a lot unfolding in the past couple of days, you guys, and take a look at this though. Democrats are frustrated with the latest Manchin pitch on Build Back Better. This just came out today as, yes, he has approved stimulus, but it has been reduced significantly. As we heard, it was going to be a significantly reduced modified version of the Build Back Better. And there's some provisions that have been slashed by Joe Manchin. I'm going to give you all the details in this video. Now, in addition to that, yesterday, take a look at this, you guys. Bipartisan bill banning Russian oil sets up a clash with the White House. And who's leading the charge? Senator Joe Manchin, it says the White House said that it does not have a strategic interest in reducing the global supply of energy. And that would raise prices at the gas pump for the American people. And a lot of people are very concerned about this because they're saying Joe Manchin is saying he's concerned about debt and inflation doesn't want to pass more stimulus domestically. However, he is leading the charge on this one, which is going to add to inflation uh, of gas prices. Take a look at this. A growing bipartisan group of lawmakers released legislation on Thursday yesterday that would block imports of Russian oil despite President Joe Biden's opposition to cutting off the shipments, setting up a political standoff over how to ratchet up the punishments against Moscow for its war in Ukraine. Lead co-sponsor Senator Joe Manchin, who chairs the Energy and Natural Resources Committee and Senator Lisa Mikowski said that they would take the blame for a jump in gasoline prices that would likely follow a move to restrict supply from Russia, one of the world's top energy producers. Man, let me know your thoughts, you guys. I think I could kind of see both perspectives, but they're making the argument that um, you're doing this for Ukraine, but you're not doing it for the American people. Now, right now, Ukraine is under attack. Um, there's all of these war crimes we're hearing that are being committed by Russia. And Joe Manchin saying, I will take the blame. We need to help them out. We need to cut off Russia, take a stance against this. But they're saying that's going to negatively impact inflation and the American people. And they're saying, okay, you're willing to do that for Ukraine, but you're not willing to do it for stimulus for people. Let me know your thoughts, you guys. Uh, I'm not taking sides on this one. I'm just presenting you the facts. You let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But take a look. Uh, people are hitting back. Say it ain't so on taxes, Joe. Oil hits 111 a barrel and could go higher. A tax increase is the last thing the economy needs. This is being led by Senator Joe Manchin. And it almost feels like a lot of the things he's doing is almost in blatant opposition of the president. Almost like he's saying, okay, the way you're running things is not the way I would do it. Let me share with you what I think we should be doing. And the way the Senate is set up, I'm going to take a stance and oppose your positions because uh, right now in a 50-50 Senate, every senator, if they took a stance of opposition, um, it's almost like they have the same amount of power as the president. Let me know your thoughts, you guys. President Joe Manchin, President Joe Biden, uh, let me know your thoughts. But take a look at this. Another one. Political editor hits Manchin for being willing to stomach inflation for Ukraine but not for the Biden agenda. And a lot of people are vocalizing this, but take a look at this, you guys. Also coming out just yesterday, the White House announces new sanctions on Russia oligarchs, making it known that they are against everything that's happening in Russia, hitting them with more sanctions, you guys. I'm gonna give you all the details of everything that's unfolding with stimulus, with Russia, Joe Manchin, Joe Biden. Uh, let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, before we do though, if you could do me a quick favor, just takes a second, if you appreciate the updates, unbiased, just reading the articles, giving you the facts, and I cite all my sources so you know exactly where they're coming from. If you appreciate that, if you could do me a quick favor, just smash that like button for me. Just takes a second, helps out the channel a ton. Thank you so much. Also, if you want to stay up to date, totally free, you can come join the Ram fam. I'll keep you up to date. Just hit the subscribe button, turn on that notification bell. And if you got any specific questions for me, I'm easy to get a hold of directly. All you got to do is hop onto Instagram, shoot me a DM at steveram3. And also wanted to mention that I've got a second channel, Steve Ram Finance. Uh, haven't been uploading to it yet, and that's because there is a lot going on in the works, you guys. We are rebanding. We're going to be releasing a lot of new stuff I'm really excited about. Um, not going to share everything yet, but there is more to come 
from Steve Ram for you guys. So uh, gonna be sharing a whole lot more here very soon. But with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so first up, let's talk about what President Joe Biden has done in stance against Russia. Then we're gonna be talking about the additional measures that uh, Joe Manchin would like to see. And then we're gonna be talking about the new stimulus proposal released by Joe Manchin as well that has a lot of Democrats upset. So first up, link in the description below, White House announces new sanctions on Russia oligarchs. And it says, President Joe Biden imposed new sanctions Thursday, yesterday, on eight members of the Russian elite, along with members of their families, as he warned Russia is intensifying its blood the invasion of Ukraine with indiscriminate bombings. And yes, we're hearing they're also hitting residential random areas as well. The new sanctions are the Biden administration's latest attempt to squeeze Russian President Vladimir Putin as the invasion of Ukraine advances. The goal is to maximize the impact on Putin and Russia, Biden said, accusing the oligarchs he is targeting of lining their pockets with Russian people's money while Ukraine and the people are hiding in subways from missiles that are being fired indiscriminately. Our interest is to maintain the strongest unified economic campaign in all history, and I think that we're really on the way to doing that, Biden said. However, he has not supported cutting off the Russian oil supply, which is the next step that we're hearing is coming from Joe Manchin. Take a look at this. Bipartisan bill banning Russian oil sets up a clash with the White House. And as I read for you earlier, Joe Manchin is leading the charge on this. And listen to this quote that he said. If there was a poll being taken and they said, Joe, would you pay 10 cents more per gallon to support the people of Ukraine and stop the support of Russia? I would gladly pay 10 cents more per gallon, Manchin said at a press conference. Manchin knocked the White House for opposing the halt on imports of Russian oil based on fears that it would further raise pump prices. Crude oil prices touched their highest level since 2008 earlier on Thursday, and the average retail gasoline price jumped 7 cents overnight to $3.73 a gallon, up $1 from just a year ago. They are so wrong, Manchin said, calling the White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki irresponsible for reiterating that the White House doesn't back a ban on Russian oil. At Thursday's White House briefing, Saki told reporters that we don't have a strategic interest in reducing a global supply of energy. That would raise prices at the gas pump for the American people. Now, despite the continued White House resistance to the U.S. oil embargo, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi also said this morning that she backs the growing push to ban Russian oil. I'm all for that. Ban it, Pelosi said. So, wow, Pelosi taking a side with Joe Manchin, saying, listen, right now, we need to make it known that we support Ukraine, we oppose Russia, and even if this causes a little bit of inflation at the gas pumps, we need to take a stance, which is actually the opposite of what we're hearing from President Joe Biden and the White House. Now, also know that Joe Manchin is getting a lot of flack for this because he was not willing to add to inflation for stimulus for direct payments to people. And take a look at this, you guys. Retweets coming out. Manchin said to help the Ukraine, I would gladly pay 10 cents more per gallon. San Stimes, he responded and said, willing to stomach inflation for Ukraine, but not for major components of Biden's domestic agenda. And that was deleted shortly after. And you can see here, Kevin McCallum responded, deleted. So you guys, let me know your thoughts uh, on this. It seems like um, wanting to support Ukraine. However, uh, this is gonna add to inflation and not supporting more stimulus and direct payments for people. And we're gonna get more details on that. Take a look at this, you guys. Link in the description below. Democrats frustrated with the latest mansion pitch on Build Back Better, or Building a Better America, we're hearing is gonna be the new name. Joe Manchin is actually helping write the new stimulus bill right now, and he has released key components that he would like to see, and also excluding a lot of key components Democrats wanted to have in there. Take a look, you guys. Senate Democrats are feeling exasperated with Senator Joe Manchin's latest proposal on a scaled down version of President Biden's Build Back Better agenda that would leave out big social spending initiatives like an expanded child care, universal pre-kindergarten, national paid family leave, and long-term home health care. Manchin is proposing that his colleagues choose one 10-year program to focus on and devote the other half of the revenues raised from tax reform and prescription drug reform to deficit reduction and fighting inflation. So he's cutting all of these out and he's saying pick one we're going to do it over the course of the next 10 years and that's going to be it he is suggesting limiting new spending to climate programs instead of an array of social spending initiatives that he says would likely get baked into a federal budget baseline for years to come so pulling out all of the stimulus provisions social spending things that would go to people saying we need to axe those 
Manchin says the country has to get its fiscal house in order before embarking on new grand spending plans. But his colleagues aren't ready to let go of that. Ambitious reforms that they've talked about for more than years, such as direct federal support for expanded access to child care. And as you'll recall, in the Build Back Better bill, they wanted to have unemployment extensions, stimulus checks. We had some calling for $6 trillion, $7 trillion, $10 trillion in spending, calling for monthly reoccurring checks. All of these provisions have gotten reduced, cutouts, and it's been going down, down, down significantly because Joe Manchin has been opposing it. And now he's saying we should just probably cut out all of the social spending. Now, he argues that the nation can't keep adding to the deficit when inflation is running at a 40-year high. But that stance is fueling tensions with leading Democratic progressives and liberal advocacy groups. As he's saying, listen... We need to be responsible with the spending. We can't just be giving out free money because this is going to be adding to inflation. Now, the article says if he wants to focus on economic packages, then he needs to remember child care is an economic issue, said Senator Elizabeth Warren in response when asked about Manchin's pared down proposal. We have many, many, many parents at home today because they can't get child care. We have people who can't work in the child care industry because they don't make a living wage, she added. If we want to have an economy that's firing on all cylinders, we want people to be able to go back to work. Let me point out that affects inflation. When you don't have enough workers, the prices go up, she argued in response to Manchin's concern about the rising prices, which he has cited as a major reason not to pass Biden's Build Back Better agenda. And Senate Health Committee Chairwoman Patty Murray, who is leading the efforts to pass funding for expanded access to child care and universal pre-K, said that her priorities are all about dealing with inflation. We all understand that we are all fighting for it, she said. What I feel very strongly is that Congress needs to address some of those costs that families are feeling today. Child care is a huge part of that, and it's a barrier for people to be able to get back to work so that they can support their families in this challenging time. Manchin, however, has raised doubt about the argument that spending hundreds of billions of dollars on new social programs will fight inflation by lowering costs. And he said, I never found out that you can lower costs by spending more, he told reporters after Biden's first State of the Union address on Tuesday evening. And he shrugged off Biden's efforts on Tuesday to revive the key elements of his Build Back Better agenda, such as spending hundreds of billions of dollars to reduce child care costs and, and establish universal pre-K. It just keeps adding up and up, he told reporters. To me, it's all about inflation. Inflation is the number one enemy that we have in America today. Some Democrats say that they are growing tired of the back and forth with Manchin, which he drags on for for months, leaving them deeply frustrated over his inability to strike a deal. It all comes down to Joe, one Democratic senator said, who requested anonymity. And he said he wants to keep changing things. The great mystery has been, why is it so blank hard to have senators sit down and work out the details? The lawmaker said, we're all so tired of Build Back Better. And the senator said, politically, it's just a killer. It sucks all the life out of us. We're all so completely frustrated by it. Man, I know there's a lot of people here on the channel that have vocalized that as well. And right now, for Democrats, this is really difficult because this is a midterm year election. So in November, it's going to be midterms. And right now, Democrats, they're in full control of Congress. They've got the Senate, they've got the House, the presidency, and they have the majorities. So through the process of reconciliation, they literally could pass through whatever they could all unify and agree upon. And right now, they can't do that. Uh, so this is very difficult because they're not passing things through. And what we've seen historically is that when uh, one party is in full control, if they don't get things done, then the next elections, things will flip to the other party as the American people are seeing, hey, you're in full control and you're not getting things done. So they're very concerned about losing their power. And so it is very likely that they're going to be trying to push things through, especially as we get closer to those elections to let people see, hey, we're getting things done. And that is why uh, I personally think there is going to be new major pushes for stimulus packages, maybe even stimulus checks, things to appease the American people to get them on board with keeping them in power. Now, we will see. I will keep you up to date. And let me know your thoughts. Do you think it'll be too little too late? Uh, or do you think it'll work and convince people to vote for them to keep them in place? We will see you guys. I will keep you up to date. And as more information rolls out on this new Building a Better America, the revised Build Back Better, and provisions to be included, I'll let you know here on the channel. 
And as always, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you made it this far and you haven't already, don't forget, take a quick second, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Helps out my channel a ton. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Also, leave your comments. Share this out if you think it's going to help out other people. If you want to stay up to date, totally free to do so. All you got to do is hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell. If you got any specific questions for me, I'm easy to get a hold of directly. All you got to do is hop onto Instagram, shoot me a DM at steveram3. And with that being said, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. I will catch you in the next one. Take care. God bless. This is Steve.